Well, it's not a Saturday night fever, but it is a Saturday night party, and they're not booing, folks. They're Krugan. That's Larry Kruger joining me next for a Saturday Night Live edition of Locked On Warriors. Here we go. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. you for making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for $20 off your first purchase. And look, Game Time is especially valuable, valuable now because the Warriors' first preseason game is just a week away I'm ecstatic, and I'm even more ecstatic because I've got my, 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 my friend, my longtime friend, Larry Kruger, joining me. You can follow him on Twitter at SportsLarryK. It's an absolute pleasure, brother, to see you. Happy Saturday night. How are you doing? And let's start with the hot topic, which is a player that the moment I found out was released, I, if my ears were perked, my attention was right on point. I would love Reggie Bullock in a Warriors uniform, and he is now an unrestricted free agent after being released by the San Antonio Spurs, the tail end of a lot of trades happening this off season. Good to see you. How are you? And what are your thoughts about Reggie Bullock, man? Are you, are you as intrigued as I am or are you not as excited? Your thoughts? Well, I mean, he can shoot the basketball. No mm -hmm. question about it. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, um, he's 32. You know, I loved him back at Carolina. Is there been rumors of the Warriors showing interest? No, he just became available today. So, um, until his availability was known, like we didn't know if the Spurs were going to cut him. Like he might have, they might have thought of, of keeping him, but I think they're going the youth movement. Um, so they just cut him and, and sent him out to the pasture, man. So first come, first serve. Whoever wants him can get him. I don't think anyone's linked to him right now. So I, I, right now it's just a hypothetical what if, right? I would love Reggie Bullock. I think if the Warriors are going to settle for a wing instead of a big, which is what I personally truly want, he would be perfect. He shoots the ball, he's a tenacious uh, defender. We've all seen him in those playoff series where the Warriors and Mavericks were playing each other. And look, he, I think he fits perfectly with what they're looking for. But that's my thought. I don't know what you think uh, about Reggie Bullock, but he's out there. I don't know, man. What, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, you know, he's he's a he's a good shooter. I mean, the guy can shoot the basketball. There's no question. I mean, 38 uh, percent three point shooter last year, 38.4 uh, percent three point shooter over his career. You know, this guy, the guy can shoot the basketball. And to, as far as I'm concerned, you know, you, you, you can never have enough skill. You yep. know, you can never have enough skill. Um, I'm, I'm excited about the Warrior roster, though they still, to me, look a little on the small side. But, um, you know, th there's a lot of age on this team. Yes. And, um, you know, it's and the expectations are really, really high. Um, and so. You know, I'm, I'm eager to, the, I'm really excited about, you know, Trace Jackson Davis. I'm really excited about Usman Garuba, uh, two six eight guys who I think are really going to help them inside this year. But it would be nice if they had a, a lob threat and they yeah. really don't have one. Um, you know, I'm obviously Bullock doesn't give you a lob threat. He's not a lob threat, but. Um, I'll tell you what, what intrigued me, and I did a video on it earlier this week, yeah. is the idea that you could maybe flip Chris Paul in a trade for Drew Holiday. You know, if you could if you could trade Chris Paul and some asset not named Jonathan Kuminga uh, and, and, and maybe, you know, future draft choices, and you could get Drew Holiday. I think Drew Holiday makes the – fits with the Warriors. I think, you know, he's a big guard. He can play defense. Uh, Portland's looking to rebuild. They might like the expiring Chris Paul contract. Uh, Chris Paul, to me, it's like a 10% chance that he gets through the season and is ready come playoff time. I mean, it's, Great. it's, the, you know, the NBA season, it's a war of attrition. So the Warriors have some serious age on this roster. I mean, they picked up Rudy Gay. I mean, Steph Curry's 35. Rudy Gay's 37. Yep. Draymond Green, I just heard, is out now yes. for the next month or whatever. We'll talk about he's, that in a second. Yeah. He's 33. Corey Joseph, 32. Uh, the Rodney Magruder's 32. Chris Paul's 38. Pa Gary Payton's 30, and he's he's banged up. 
Um, you know, Clay Thompson's 33. Just it's a it's kind of an older team, and yep. I, I I really I liked the idea of getting rid of Jordan Poole because Jordan Poole is broken. But um, you know, I, I to me I looked at the Jordan Poole for Chris Paul, the similarly to KD for D'Lo. In that, you know, D'Lo's not the answer, but it was a smart move to get a salary spot that eventually became Andrew Wiggins and Jonathan Kuminga. And I think yep. the real value of Chris Paul has nothing to do with Chris Paul or this team or this year as much as it has to do with what you can turn Chris Paul into. Correct. And if you could get Drew Holiday, now I'm intrigued. Uh, I love and we, we We talked a little bit about Drew Holiday on the show a day or two ago. Um, I love the idea of Drew Holiday and the fact that Brian Windhorst, again, we don't know if like it was just him shooting the, you know, what, uh, off the hip, or if there was actually some truth to this, his, this report that he, uh, that he did on, uh, whatever that show is called, uh, NBA today or ESPN's NBA. I have no idea what the show is called, but it's on every day. I think 12, uh, here on the West coast. And Brian Windhorst was on there saying that the warriors would be like a, a, a great fit. I, I, I have no idea if there's any truth to it. But I love the idea of Drew Holiday. Um, I'm seeing one person in the chat not liking the idea of Reggie Bullock. If you can add specifics as to why, I'd love to hear it. Because the dude can play D. The dude can rebound. The dude can shoot. Uh, he has a high basketball IQ. I personally love Reggie Bullock as a tail end of the bench type player who can give you minutes. He's not super old. Rudy Gay, as you mentioned, 37. Reggie Bullock, 32. So you're getting a that, that five-year difference is big uh, when you're talking about the late versus early 30s. But Drew Holiday, let me ask you this real fast. Let's say, uh, and I've been thinking about him a lot because I was thinking about other teams who would benefit wildly if they actually uh, acquired him. The Miami Heat come to mind. The Boston Celtics, I think, would turn into a lethal world championship favorite if they could get him without giving up uh, anything in return besides picks and someone to match salaries, maybe a Malcolm Brogdon type. But uh, like, what if what if the, the Portland Trailblazers tell Golden State, Drew Holiday is yours, but you have to give up Kaminga or Moody? Um, which might be what it comes down to, like, given other teams are probably interested as well. Would you give up one of those two progenies? Are you are you comfortable with that? What are your thoughts on 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 possibly throwing those two in? One of those two or both of those two in? Well, I wouldn't trade Kuminga. Uh, that you know, Kuminga, you know, has got huge upside, and I and I wouldn't move Kuminga, but Moody, I would move. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to make some. You know, he uh, Drew Holiday makes 36, and uh, CP3 makes 30. So you're going to have to close that gap a little bit, right. but I'm not trading Kuminga. But if you want to move Jonathan Moody in a first round draft choice, um, I would do that. I would do that. Um, you know, it's Kuminga to me is is a major is 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 the one thing that you have down the road um, that could get significantly better. So I'm not I'm not moving off of him. I mean, I I'd say the Warriors right now have about a two percent chance of winning the title. This year, Ooh. and if they made that trade, they would go from like a two percent chance to like a ten percent chance. So I'm, it still is not like a great chance, but um, and it, so I mean, if it, if it, if somehow getting you moving Kuminga would would get you a seventy percent chance of winning a title or fifty percent chance, right? I might consider it, but I don't really believe that, and I just think. When I look at Jonathan and his body, his um, his upside, his I mean, from what I'm hearing, he's a bigger person. I mean, he's like grown. He's like six nine, maybe six ten at this point. If that is really indeed the case, I just think his upside. He's got he's got as much upside as almost any any young uh, forward in the game. So I I know they didn't feel Kerr didn't feel comfortable playing him in the playoffs. But it's a process, and yeah. his maturation is a process. There's just too much upside there. Um, it's one thing to get rid of uh, Wiseman. Uh, there's reason to believe that Wiseman is not going to fulfill his potential. Um, I, I think I think Kuminga probably is. So if you move Kuminga, you got to get something really, really good. I think I would want more than just Drew Holiday. Yeah, I, I again, the idea of Drew's awesome. If they can get him in return for, let's say, an expiring, maybe a pick swap, a future for if it's something like that, sign me up. I love Drew Holiday. I saw in the chat somewhere someone wrote that Drew Holiday uh, actually doesn't perform well in the postseason. I don't know what you're watching. I mean, the guy was one of the most important players in a world championship team, and he always rises in the postseason. That's what I see. Um, so I, I, I'm totally with you, man. If the Warriors can do that, great. Uh, some people in the chat saying the Reggie Bullock 
<clears throat> excuse me, has declined in recent years. I mean, look, I don't want another Jermichael Green. Like, like that is something the team should not repeat. And maybe that's why they're being extra cautious with this 14th uh, uh, roster spot that they have yet to fill. Um, could be that maybe they're waiting for yet another player that could be bought out or waived like Reggie Bullock. I mean, that's the market that is so difficult to predict, right? You know, agents and, and front office execs who are really dialed in are the only ones who truly know what that buyout market is like, right? That they could see ahead. Um, so who knows? I'm hoping maybe that they, they have a super wild card that they're holding a uh, player that they're waiting for. I have no idea, but, um, yeah, I still like the idea of Reggie Bullock. Compared to Rudy Gay, compared to Rodney Magruder, um, I would prefer Reggie Bullock. I'll, I'll just say it. I'll just leave it at that. Um, and again, you wouldn't be getting Reggie Bullock for the shooting either, even though he is a career 38% three-point shooter, which is better than Jermichael or, or most other players they've looked at. Um, I don't know if you're getting him for the shooting. You're getting him, I think, more for the defense, for the the the, 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 the smart basketball IQ to not basically frustrate Kerr. I almost feel like that's what Kerr is looking for. He wants players who are going to play his style and not annoy him. And I do think Reggie Bullock is one of those kinds of players. When we come back, though, there is news about Draymond Green. Is there anything you want to add to that, by the way, before we move on, Larry? Sorry, no, I just I, wanna... I just think, you know, you, I'd want to research why, you know, why he's available. You know, if, if he was really looking great, he probably wouldn't be available. I, I think Bullock is kind of a, uh, you know, I don't I don't see a lot of great lateral agility on either end of the floor. So, you know, it, it, I might want to, I mean, I like the idea of Bullock, but I don't, I'm not like, oh my God, you know, he's, he's the answer. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, my answer is a big, but it doesn't seem like the Warriors are going that direction. So Whoever they do sign, I want them to be competent when it comes to guarding bigger players. I want them to be competent in terms of, uh, of being a bruising presence inside. Uh, look, Draymond Green is out for a month, or who, who knows how long it's going to be. Fortunately, it's, it's not even a high ankle sprain. I, I, people are treating this thing like it's like some crazy injury, but it's just an ankle sprain. I, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a moment because I'm not pressing any panic buttons, but it does certainly raise the issue of depth in the front court because the Warriors don't have it already. And if Draymond Green's going to be out, that's a very thin position that just got thinner. I also want to share this real quick before we go to the, actually the, to the, uh, the, the ad read, uh, the Golden State Warriors Twitter account or the X account, whatever we're calling this thing, uh, attributed Steve Kerr. I don't know when Kerr said this. Um, I know Kerr has been making himself available to the media lately, um, but Steve Kerr is quoted as saying, I'm excited about Jonathan Kaminga. He's had a really good summer. He's in his third year and getting better and working hard. And he's right on track to get to where he needs to go. So I'm excited, unquote. That's music to my ears, Larry. Any thoughts on that? Because we just talked about Kaminga a moment ago. Well, I mean, Kaminga's the one guy on this team that um, could make a significant jump. So yes. he's, to me, he's the, if you really think the Warriors are going to make some uh, improvement this year, you, then you better be pro Kaminga because he's the one guy on the roster. I mean, everybody else. I mean, I like as I said, I like Usman Garuba. I like Trace Jackson Davis. Um, everybody else is either getting worse or plateauing. It's like him. There's Moody. Uh, maybe a, you know we'll see what Pajemski's got. Um, everybody else, I think, has already played their best basketball. So. Kuminga is the one guy. If you really want to see Golden State, you know, make a run at a title, then you have a vested interest in Kuminga becoming a significantly better player than he has been thus far. And it's possible because you're talking about a 20 year old who's maybe the most athletic player in the entire league. So it's to me their whole hopes of being um, a real legitimate title contender you know, are tied to Jonathan Kuminga making a gigantic step forward. Yep. And the motto of this show, great things happen when Kuminga plays. And so let's hope that comes to fruition uh, this year. We've got to talk about this Draymond Green injury in just a moment uh, because that, uh, again, it highlights a major issue with the Warriors, which is the front court. Um, but first, got to give some love to a sponsor that I'm particularly excited to hype up a little bit tonight. And that's game time. And game time is all about tickets. It's all about access to events, concerts, uh, sporting events, whatever it is. If you need tickets, game time is there for you. Um, the bottom line is, look, if you're, if you're trying to save money and this world is crazy, I don't blame anyone for trying to fortify uh, their financial security. And so if you're trying to save money when it comes to buying tickets, game time will match 
any lower offer from someone else if the tickets are in the same section and row. So, th- so it's, a, it's a low price guarantee. They have killer last minute deals, all in prices. You can get a view from the seat before you buy the ticket. There's a lot to, to a lot of perks, a lot of positives when, when it comes to game time. So download the game time app, create an account and use the code locked on NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account and redeem the code locked on NBA for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price, guarantee. You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm loving the the audience tonight. They're engaged. They're in. Uh, I, I love some of the, the people in the chat. For example, uh, Genji Gawk. Look, look at look, Larry is great. Look at all this love he's giving you, man. He said, not only he says you're great, Calling you a huge guest. I don't remember Genji, who's, a, who's one of the everydayers for this program, ever giving anyone that kind of love before. Larry, you are a loved individual in the Bay wow. Area and then some. Um, and I'm fortunate to have you tonight. Thank you for joining me. Uh, again, follow Larry Kruger on all social media platforms at Sports Larry K. I don't know if that's actually true, all platforms, but at least Twitter. Any other social media you want to promote before we start talking about this dream on green injury? Yeah, check me out on IG. Um, you know, I had a had you know doing the Instagram thing, doing a, putting out a lot of stuff on TikTok, IG, YouTube, Facebook. Um, uh, man, I'm all over everything right now. My my son has uh, helped me coordinate a lot of my social media. We had we had a a, a couple a uh, couple IG reels in the last week that have pulled in like almost four hundred thousand views. So. A lot of a lot of great stuff going on social media wise, and um, and then catch me on ninety five seven the game. I'll be on tomorrow morning with Lo Neal from the from the Santa Clara Hilton at eleven a.m. Um, doing a little forty nine er pregame leading into giant leading to forty nine ers Cardinals tomorrow at Levi's. I'm hearing a lot. We can't. I know this is a Warriors program, but I'm hearing a lot of chat about that game being a trap game. Uh, quick thoughts, like thirty seconds before we move on to Warriors. Is it a trap game? I think it is. I mean, uh, James Conner is a really good running back. I think we're going to find out about how exactly how good uh, the 49ers run defense is. Um, and I expect Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk to go. So I think the 49ers are going to run their record to 4 0. I don't know if that I would give the 14 points and Ooh. and uh, bet it, Ooh. but um, I like the Niners to roll to 4 0. There you go. I love to hear that. And your son, Kevin, is killing it with your social media, dude. Yeah, yeah I, I, your, your Instagram and TikTok, those clips with the subtitles are incredible, man. He's doing a phenomenal job for you. Congrats on raising a family slash business. <laughs> Bravo. Uh, I'm envious. <laughs> exactly. um, so let's talk about Draymond Green here. There's some some random Twitter account. I forgot what the name of, of it is, but some random uh, Draymond Green fan account on Twitter. Got the scoop initially. Bravo. Kudos to that account. And I'm sorry for forgetting what the name of it is. And then next thing you know, uh, Mark Spears is coming out with the official news. Then you got uh, Jason Dumas. Everyone's starting to report this thing that, in fact, Draymond Green did suffer an ankle sprain uh, during practice and training camp. Now, the great news, this is not good news. This is great news, is that it is not a high ankle sprain. They've already done x-rays. It's an ankle sprain, okay? The, the, the timetable that I'm reading so far is three to six weeks. Uh, I've seen Draymond Green suffer horrific ankle injuries that would knock out most players for months, only to see him come back the very next game. The only thing I've ever seen knock out Draymond Green for a long time are that is that lower back injury, which I hope never comes back. Unfortunately, it seems like uh, his focus on strengthening his core uh, is is helping a lot with his back issues because that didn't seem to be a big uh, problem last year. But nonetheless, he's out. He's not going to play uh, probably this entire preseason, certainly not going to be playing next week uh, in the preseason debut Warriors-Lakers. My personal opinion, and, I, and, and Larry, I'd love to get your feedback on this, is that for the short term, it solves the Chris Paul dilemma. Um, you know, Steve Kerr has publicly said he's got six starters on this team referencing Chris Paul. The dude is clearly very sensitive about his starting role. He's never once come off the bench in his entire career in the NBA. And my opinion is, to smooth things over, you're probably going to see Chris Paul in the starting lineup playing these five-minute spurts we heard Mark Spears report about earlier. Um, what are your thoughts on what the Warriors are going to do and on the injury, sir? Um, what you, you coaching, isn't that, wasn't, <laughs> well, kids, that uh, kids. wasn't that uh, CP three's line <laughs> yes, uh, <yes. laughs> to one of the reporters? Um, yes. 
Yeah, well, as far as Draymond goes, I mean, this is this is the issue with Golden State is that. Um, did by the way, did you see that they're saying that Jordan Poole said to Draymond Green, "You're an expensive backpack for for Steph." Do you want to talk? Do you want to get into the now? I was, I was going to bring that. Oh, up, okay, dude. we can hit that later. But yeah. um, no, I, this is the problem with Golden State this year is that the NBA season is eternal, and there's a lot of games. And you got rid of a healthy young player in Jordan Poole, and now you're going to need your old players to play, or you're going to have to lean on your bench. And if you have to lean on your bench, you're probably going to be a borderline playoff team. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I wouldn't, I, you know, if the Warriors have even just regular kinds of injuries, I think they're going to be like a five or six seed at best. And um, if they have any serious long-term injuries, they, they very easily could miss the playoffs. So I think that's what this season, you know, and, and I know everybody wants to be positive about Golden State. Yeah, a lot. Of yeah, I mean, if you look at their roster, if you could just fast forward through this thing they call the regular season and get everybody <laughs> to the playoffs, kind of important. Uh, yeah. That would be one thing, but I mean, the Warriors may not even make the playoffs because of yeah. how old they are and how much time several of these veterans are going to probably, um, you know, need either to rest or due to injuries. I mean, they bet this is going to be the medical staff is going to make their money this year. Absolutely. They're going to earn it and then some. Uh, and look, they've done a killer job, man. You got to you got to give credit to Rick Celebrini. Um, I wish he would be a little more open to Rick Barry when he sends uh, a products that help that he's aiming to help the Warriors out with. Apparently, those go straight to the trash. But Rick Celebrini, nonetheless, has done a phenomenal job with the Warriors players uh, when it comes to injuries. And I, I'm not I'm personally not overly concerned. I, I This team, to me, is much deeper than it was last year. Um, I'm hoping that Steve Kerr learned from his colossal season long mistake in terms of managing Kaminga and Moody's minutes. Those two need to play. They, they, I, I, I rarely if ever see them, the, the, the Warriors get punished for playing those two guys. Yet for some reason, Kerr just has them on a very short leash. I imagine their youth and inexperience plays a, a considerable part in that. Um, but like, but I, I do have faith in the bench. Like Dario Sharch, I thought was a huge pickup. Um, why do we play? I want to play the sound by two from Steve Kerr, uh, talking about, um, uh, Trace Jackson Davis, who uh, our buddy Damon Bruce, you do a weekly hit with him. What on Wednesdays, right? You guys Mondays, do, like, Monday, class? Mondays. Okay, we yeah. do it. Well, it's a it's a forty nine er wake up, so it's the next morning after Niner games. Oh, perfect! So definitely check that out, folks. That alone is incredible. Monday morning at eight a.m. Yeah, and so Damon Bruce, who went to uh, Indiana, he's from Indiana, and he went to the school there as well. He's a Hoosier, and um, so he's he watches that team obsessively, and he was raving about Trace Jackson Davis long before the Golden State Warriors drafted him. Uh, and now, look, he might have to be an integral part of this thing. Now, the good news is he is a seasoned uh, college grad, played, played all four years. I don't know how close his relationship is with uh, Dale Davis's father, but at least he's got the genes. That alone is a huge thing. And let's hear from Steve Kerr talking about uh, Trace Jackson Davis and, and his early opinion on him so far. Yeah, Trace is an impressive young prospect. Um, you don't see that kind of college experience very often anymore. Uh, but you immediately recognize the experience level and uh, the advantage that that gives him. Um, what I like about Trace, he plays the way we like to play. Um, good passer, um, you know, dribble handoff guy at the top of the key, good screener. Uh, gives, uh, gives us a, a lob threat um, that we don't otherwise have, which is a really nice addition. Um, and I, I think he's just uh, he's the kind of guy who um, feels the game well. He's got he's got good feel for for passing, cutting, movement and a lot of the stuff that we already run. He runs really well. So um, Trace is a really intriguing prospect and um, be fun to watch him play. Yeah, and I'm excited to to uh, meet uh, young Mr. Trace Jackson Davis in Media Day Monday. Are you going, by the way? Am I going to see you there? Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm, I'm, I got to still decide. Game time but decision. I'm thinking about it. I talked to Ray Ritter um, uh, Friday, and I may head there Monday. Oh, nice. Yeah, I yeah. love Raven Ritter, the best PR man in the entire business, sports and then some. Um, was, is Trace Jackson Davis enough, man? What are your thoughts on this front court, dude? And we'll talk about the backpack uh, comments that, that reportedly Jordan Poole made. The reason why I don't want to blow that up is the source is flimsy. Not the person who said it. But their source is not exactly. I, I will get into it in a second. But real fast, what is your what are your thoughts on this front court, man? Like, are they missing a piece? Like a lot of people think, 
Uh, do you think they can survive without it? Um, is that why you're giving them two percent odds? What's your what are your thoughts on this front court that was already thin? Now they're missing Draymond Green for a month. Yeah, I mean, I I love Trace Jackson Davis and Usman Garuba. Um, they're both six eight guys who play much bigger. Um, they're different, but they both I think are going to be significant players. The Warriors have five players that I think all need to really step up and play big time basketball if they're going to go if they're going to be something this year. Usman Garuba, Trace Jackson Davis, Jonathan Kuminga, Moses Moody, and Andrew Wiggins. Those guys are the guys that they have on the on their roster that are young and healthy. And I really like Trace Jackson Davis. Um, he's got huge hands and he can make one handed passes. He's very he's got great um he's got great footwork on the low block. He's got a nice baby hook. He doesn't really have much of an offensive game face up wise yet, because Indiana just never let him shoot. I mean, I don't think right. he took a three the entire season. Right. Um, but he showed in the lead up to the draft and the workouts that he has more upside potential as a shooter than he showed at Indiana. But Steve's right. He's a four-year college player. He knows how to play. He knows how to set a screen. He knows how to roll to the bucket. Uh, he knows he, he's got, you know, he understands good shot selection. Uh, he can pass the rock. He can block shots. In a lot of ways, Trace Jackson Davis is Draymond Green. Um, Draymond Green played in the Big Ten. He can block shots and pass, and you can run your offense through him. And uh, all those things you can say about Trace Jackson Davis. Now, Garuba is interesting, too, because he's 6'8", but he's got a 7'2 wingspan. So he plays more like 6'10". He's got a really nice set shot from three-point land. He made 41% last year. He's a far better player than he was coming out of uh, Spain in the draft when the Rockets took him. And he's if he's healthy... I, I really like him. I mean, he's long. He's got he he can block shots. He can get his arms in the passing lanes, um, and he is a respectable shooter. And he's yep. his shots coming on. So I I, I, I to me, uh, Golden State if they're good this year, like better than a six seed, it's because guys like Garuba and Trace Jackson Davis are playing minutes and playing well in those minutes. Absolutely. By the way, uh, there's a there's a uh, individual in the chat named Mind Springers. I'm not highlighting your chat comments, but you're making me laugh, man. So just I just want you to, to acknowledge that individual because that is comedy there. Um, <laughs> so uh, so uh, so let's go to this backpack thing. Um, there's been a lot of speculation since the punch first happened, the infamous Draymond Green punch, and, and we're wrapping it up, Larry. I know you you got a you got an early day tomorrow, busy day tomorrow. Thank you so much for taking time out of your Saturday night to join me. Um, no so Pablo Torre, I don't know if he's still with ESPN, by the way, uh, but you know, he, he fills in hosting on a lot of different programs. He's also a writer for ESPN. Uh, I don't know if like, he's just independent now. I know him and Dan Levitard have a, a fairly close relationship, but he was hosting a program. And again, I, I don't know if it's his own show or whatever it is. I, I, I honestly don't care either, but, uh, he reported that his source told him that what, what initiated the Draymond Green punch is this comment that uh, apparently uh, Jordan Poole told Draymond Green that he holds what Stephen Curry's backpack? Is that basically what the quote was? That no, no. He the, he basically said, according to um, Tory, um, you're an expensive backpack for thirty. There you go, aka yeah, 30. Steph Curry. So that's a comment. Now I've told. Now look, there's only it is this. It's really weird to me that this story has not been leaked yet. I don't want to be the first one to report it. For, for a lot of reasons, because I think it would piss off a lot of people, and I, it's just not worth it to me. But I think I've told you off the record, Larry, what was going on with Draymond Green that day. Draymond Green was having a very heavy, emotional, disappointing, borderline depressing kind of day. It was just not a good day. In hindsight, he probably should not have even been in practice that day. I guess the reason why I bring this up is because I don't think the, the, the comments of, of Jordan, the, the context of what Jordan Poole said to me, um, doesn't matter that much. I feel like Draymond Green was on an incredibly short fuse that day and probably would have snapped regardless of what the comment was. Not defending it. I'm just trying to put paint a bigger picture here. And long story short, Draymond Green was having an awful day. And maybe someday uh, it'll come out as to the why of this and then we could talk about this a lot more in detail. But uh, you, do you remember the reason? Like I've told you, right? Like, th like does that matter to you? Like 
in the big picture and, and like I don't know. Like, what do you have, what are your thoughts on the whole Jordan Poole thing? I guess, uh, do you have an opinion on it? Well, yeah, I mean, yes, I do. I mean, um, you know, I, I, I believe this. I mean, I believe this. I mean, it's the kind of thing that would, would piss you off if somebody said that to you. If somebody said that, you know, I mean, Draymond Green is, is a Hall of Fame basketball player um, who does several great things on the floor. And if, if, um, if Jordan Poole was, you know, saying that, then um, that kind of shows a little breakdown in the in in their you know in their behind the scenes relationships. I also kind of think that people kind of undersell the fact that you know I've seen lots and lots of guys in football, in basketball, uh, in the you know in watching pros. Um, and I worked in the Canadian Football League, uh, playing ba- you know playing sports myself. I've seen lots and lots of guys go nose to nose, and there's a big difference. And nobody seemed to agree with me when I brought this up this summer, but I don't really give a shit. I'm just gonna <laughs> say it. There's a big difference between talk and physical, and when yeah. something goes physical, then it's like that opens up the the you know the the thing for escalation, and so I do believe Jordan Poole probably said something like that, and I think Jordan and I think Draymond stepped up on him, and he Draymond wanted um, Poole to make contact with him, he did, and he dropped him. Yep, and I just really believe that um, Draymond wouldn't have dropped him. If, uh, if pool didn't get physical, but once you get, once you get physical, it's like, dude, you're, that's the invite. You know, you, if you don't want to fight, then don't fight. But if you do want to fight, then get physical. And you know, I, I know it's a bigger man on a smaller man. I'm not advocate. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, uh, Draymond, uh, had license to do it, but I've seen many, 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 many guys go nose to nose. And if anybody makes contact, it's on. Oh, yeah. And there, there's plenty of guys who go nose to nose, and they jaw at each other, and it never gets physical. And that's just kind of what I've seen. But as soon as Jordan Poole pushed Draymond away, he then crossed over into now it's physical. And in a lot of people's minds, hey, man, you you put you know you get physical I get physical yep so nobody wants to buy that nobody wants to put any credence on that uh, I brought this up on ninety five seven the game uh, this summer and like the entire audience was like no man no like they've decided they decided that Draymond was the bad guy in that whole yeah. situation and um, so whatever I don't you know. Say what you want. I'm just giving you my perspective. I've yeah. seen guys in high school basketball go nose to nose at practice, and then it doesn't go anywhere because nobody gets physical. It's just they're nose to nose and they're talking and they're saying stuff. But then it's and then I've seen it in, in football practice. I've seen it in in the pros. I've seen it in college football. I've seen it in high school football. Guys go nose to nose. Some in, if as long as nobody gets physical. It's nose to nose, and guys are just talking. As soon as there's any, as soon as you cross that bridge into physical, it's on. It's absolutely on. And you can say Draymond's a bully. Maybe, maybe he is, maybe he isn't. I don't know. I don't care. But um, that's really it. I mean, uh, as soon as as soon as the pool made contact with with Green, I th- I think that. Um, gave in Draymond's mind that gave him license to drop him, and he did. Absolutely. By the way, Dave, David Tapia mentioning congratulations to Juan Toscano Anderson on the birth of his son. I was not aware of that, but I highlighted because news did come out that Juan Toscano Anderson is signing back with the Mexican Professional League. I don't know what the name of it is, but uh, he's I think he's going to Mexico City. So uh, whatever ideas that were out there about uh, Juan Toscano Anderson coming back to the Warriors, uh, that's been quashed. He is in Mexico again. And I hope it's a good season and he's making some decent money and having fun and he's happy. Uh, let's JTA, is a, J, JTA is a good man. By the way, earlier in the chat, somebody said that the Kings cut Nerlens Noel. They did, like a week ago, two weeks ago. You know what? Yeah. Nerlens, I'd be more interested in Nerlens Noel than I would be in Reggie Bullock. 
Agreed. Again, I'm not, I, we're on the same page there. The only reason why I'm not entertaining the big thing more is because I don't think the Warriors are going to do it. I just, I, I've kind of lost hope. You know what I'm saying? Like, despite what seems obvious, uh, it, that that we're not on the same page with the Warriors brass. And look, maybe, and, and a few, the last few days people have been bringing this up and it's very logical and makes sense. Maybe the Warriors look at Wingspan as the, as in the, in the whole height equation. And maybe that they're looking at that in the same regard, because you look at Draymond Green's wingspan, you look at almost every Warrior player's wingspan, uh, maybe not named Stephen Curry, and it's long. I mean, so those long arms are also uh, causing some havoc out there defensively. So who knows? I'm, I'm with you. I would love New Orleans Noels. I would love just some sort of depth on the front court to just ease the pressure off the guys they already have. But it doesn't seem like that's what the team wants. I'm very intrigued about, about what's going to happen. Um, real quick, I want to finish the show on this note. Uh, it's not Warriors related, but it is funny. Maybe it is a little Warriors related, but I haven't had a chance to play this cut yet from uh, Jimmy Butler. And because the assumption this whole summer was that uh, Dame Lillard was going to go to the Miami Heat, right? And that's the only team he wanted uh, to go to. And by the way, Chris Haynes wrote a great story for Bleach Report about the behind the scenes aspect of it. Uh, this Joe Cronin guy, the GM of the Trailblazers, I am not on his side. I don't see a long term future for a guy like him, if that's how he's treating his star players. Um, nonetheless, uh, Jimmy Butler, I think, was expecting Dame Lillard to come to the Golden State Warriors, and he published this on his own social media to the account. Heat. You mean to the Heat? Yeah, who, what did I say? I'm sorry. You said to the Warriors. Okay. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, to the Heat, obviously. So thank you for correcting me. Um, so here's Jimmy Butler after the news was announced that Dame was traded to the Bucks. Yo, NBA, man. Y'all need to look into the Bucks for tampering. Y'all do. I'm just going to put that out there. Y'all didn't hear it from me, but I heard it through somebody. Y'all look at him for second. I love that. That was just petty, short, and sweet. Um, and do, what, do you think the Dame Lillard trade, uh, does that benefit the Warriors? Let's end on that note, man. Is it? How does it impact the Warriors to you, if at all? Um, I, I think it... it it's possibly, I mean, the Blazers are rebuilding. I, I think it, you know, Lillard said that he would never want to play with the Warriors. And that was interesting considering he's a L Oakland guy. Um, but um, I think it opens up a door for Drew Holiday. So I, I, I like it. Um, as far as, you know, the Heat wanted Lillard, the Lillard, and Lillard wanted the Heat. But ultimately, um, you know, they got a better deal. Yeah. And I'm glad that he's not a Miami Heat uh, member at this point because I like the fact that, um, you know, you can't just get what you want because you want it. You didn't have the best offer, and and um, the Bucks, you know, had a better offer. And and I think the Bucks were smart because now they're the favorite in the East. Yeah, I actually, I mean, again, I think I'm going to be the minority saying this, but I think the Bucks got worse with this trade between the lack really? of depth. Their defense got worse. Dame Lillard is injury prone. Um, it's it's going to be great TV. I don't doubt that for a second. But I think the Bucks got worse. That's just my. Who's opinion. stopping that two man game though? Who's stopping Celtics. the pick and roll with Lillard and Giannis? Celtics. I think the Celtics could stop it. I I, okay. I would put them ahead, but we'll see. We'll find out. I mean, it's going to be a great yeah, offseason. Maybe. Um, I want to go to the highlighted chats to wrap up the show. Steve Wilton writes. Uh, Reggie Bullock is coming off his worst year in defensive rating. Do me a favor, Steve and everyone else. Don't ever bring up defensive rating on the show again. It is one of the most worthless <laughs> stats in the NBA. Uh, it really is. It's ridiculous. Uh, Richard Sarpong writes um, that uh, Reggie Bullock was horrible for three to four games in the postseason the last time we faced. Um, but yeah, but that's the Warriors defense was phenomenal. But who knows? I would still love Reggie Bullock on the team. Uh, Steve Walton again writing uh, the Dubs are having a hard time filling the 14th roster spot. Two for one trades are not what they should be doing. I don't think they're having a hard time. I think I think they're just being really picky about who they want for the 14th. Do you agree with that? What like do you do, like what why do you think the Warriors still haven't filled that 14th spot, Larry? Well, okay, this is the final spot, right? I mean, don't in the past, haven't they left this spot unfilled and and 15th. allowing 15th, what's that? Correct. Not well, the 14th, 15th you, is the un you you have to fill 14 and they haven't done that yet. Oh, I got you. Um I just think that they probably have a number of guys they're interested in. And you know, you gotta remember this. You know, there's personalities that fit and don't fit around the league. So there's guys that become available for all kinds of reasons. There's guys that become available because they're just not good enough. They lose a competition in camp. There's guys that become available because of personalities. And I just think it's smart. Uh, if you have, if you've got a bunch of options and they're all, you know, decent options, but you think that you could have those options at any point. 
why not wait for maybe a great option? I, I think it's actually smart. It's a volatile league. There's all kinds of guys that don't get along. There's also draft picks and all kinds of roster moves for every other team. The odds are that somebody that you like more than the options today are is going to come free between now and opening night. And I just think that um, I think it's smart. I think, you know, leave yourself some flexibility in case something happens or somebody looks great. You know, there's also some unknown on your own team. You don't know who's going to go to camp and really light it ablaze. Um, you don't know exactly. You're like, you know, I always feel like, you know, there's the paper evaluation of a team and then there's the on the floor evaluation of a team. And it could leave you with different conclusions and leave other teams with different conclusions about their roster. So I love the idea of what they're doing, which is, yeah, you know, you got, you get, you could go with Dwight Howard or one of these guys, but there's no urgency to do that. Just play it cool. Uh, see how the whole thing shakes out. Maybe there'll be somebody that has a surplus. Maybe there'll be two personalities that don't get along. Maybe you'll have an injury and you'll, you'll want to, different player than you'd want today i mean there's all kinds of things i i i would i think it's smart to wait um and you know and, and just see kind of how the rest of the league shakes out maybe you know you're gonna have scouts all around the league looking at preseason games you know you're gonna see different guys in condition who's in shape who's out of shape um there's just a lot of factors here Versailles, yeah. and i think that the smarter move is leave it open unless you unless you just absolutely love somebody mm -hmm. then leave that spot open and odds are you'll you may change the kind of player you're looking for you may change there you may luck into something really really good so i, I kind of like the move actually totally uh and, and douglas mikes uh, writes that he's still hoping that auto porter jr gets bought out and, and that look that could be a possibility as well i mean i would not be opposed to getting him back for another season. Um, would that, would that excite you? Do you have any, uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I, I do like Otto Porter. I mean, what's not to like, he, right. he can rebound. Uh, he's a veteran. He, you know, he fits your culture. He was already here. He's a 45% three point shooter. Uh, he was a key factor on a championship team. Uh, he, he would be interesting to me. Absolutely. Yeah, totally, man. If, if that's the, if that's the play, I'm not opposed to that. Um, at all. Mind Springers uh, brings up Kevin Love. I don't think Love wanted to come to the Warriors. I think he's happy in Miami. Um, and last but not least, uh, David Tapia writes, with Dre out for a while, can they bring another body to camp? To my knowledge, no. There are no injury exceptions like, like it exists in the NFL. There are uh, it, it, rare exceptions for like season-long type injuries, but otherwise, that's that's part of the reason why the Warrior, uh, the NBA gives NBA teams 15 roster spots. They They account for the fact that injuries happen so you don't get extra roster spaces typically now training camp don't quote me on that but i'm fairly certain that also will apply to training camp as well so larry man i love you brother uh this was a great show i think um i know you're a very busy man dude so thank you for taking time out of your schedule let me know what warrior season is just around the corner so let me know anytime you want me to come on for post games i'm always there for you brother let me know um we'll be doing a lot of post game on the crew yeah. show love you too bro and we'll, we'll yeah. talk soon Absolutely. Thank you, everyone, for joining us as always. Um, and we'll be back at this soon. Take it easy. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Good stuff, man. That was awesome.